All right, chip of the day. It's an ST2042, an enhanced power switch, not recommended for new designs. Of course, as in keeping with uh, the Inside Guy channel, everything is obsolete usually. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you find these things surplus or you might want to repair something. So it's always interesting to find these things. And then even if you decide that, you know, you're not going to ever use this thing, the ideas might translate to new parts. You say, oh, yeah, I'll just need to, I just need to find the uh, modern version of this. So you, you'll look, you'll look, uh, you'll go to Google, Google and say, uh, you know, what's the replacement for, recommended replacement for an ST, you know, 2042, or call up ST and say, hey, uh, I like these ST 2042s. What's your modern, what's your modern equivalent, right? But anyway, I've got a bunch of these, so I want to figure out how they, how they operate. Um, 80 milliohms high side MOSFET switch. So it's going to be a P channel. 500 milliamp continuous current per channel. It's two channel, um, operates from 2.7 to 5.5 volts. So, so you can imagine this is like a five volt switch. Now what, is, what does it mean to be a five volt switch? So, um, so we'll look at the block diagram. So there's an enable, you can turn things on and off, and there's two channels, output one, output two. So there's enable one, enable two, low true. Um, and then there is a input. So here's the input pin. And so things come in and they can either go through this P channel or it can go through that P channel. So it's a switch. You can either turn this one on or turn this one on. So you can have different circuits here and you can enable this circuit, enable this circuit. So it's like a, a high side relay. Um, and it's got current limiting and thermal sense and some other things, current limit for the two channels. Um, so, um, yeah, it's an interesting part for a system design. Uh, so it's got, like I said, uh, input, output, output, and then, uh, uh, OC1 and OC2 are over current. Uh, it gives you a signal that Something's, something's awry. Uh, all right, so let's hook one up, give it a try. All right, uh, so we have a uh, circuit here. Let's bring in some power. Uh, bring power here and here. I have it hooked up, so the one, that, one of the enable lines is, uh, can you see the LED? One of the enable lines turns on the switch so we can we can turn it on, and I've got also some load on it. This tells me that it's on, but I've got uh, 20 ohms, 20 ohms. So let's do a quick calculation. Uh, we've got five volts and 20 ohms, so we have 250 milliamps, okay? So 250 milliamps is half of its rated current, and uh, so that's working just, that's just working great, okay? Now I want to make some measurements here because uh, I found something a bit odd about this part. So let's uh, let's go here. We'll measure ground. We'll measure the output. Let's see. The output is over here. Go on to that one there. And oops, do I have the? Yeah, I have the. Uh, okay, that's ground there. Okay, I'm gonna push the button and we get 4.8 volts. Um, and how much do we have going in? We have, we have 5.03 volts going in. In fact, let me adjust that to like exactly through five volts, right? We have five volts going in and on the output, we only have 4.77. So it, oops, 4.77. So it's dropping a lot. Um, yeah, it's, uh not being happy here let me let me re remove the load and now let's go yeah now we get the full five volts so at some current uh it's just fine but at 400 uh, um uh 250 milliamps it's dropping a whole bunch of voltage okay and so let's go ahead and measure the drop voltage uh let's see here is the Input, input, input. This is the input, right? Oops. This is the input right here. And we're going to be measuring input to output and push the button. 
Yeah, we've got 0.11 volts, okay? So let's do some calculations. Okay, so we had uh, 0.11 volts and we had 250 milliamps. That says that we have 0.4 ohms, 400 milliohms. And we're supposed to get like, what, 80 milliohms? What did it say? Yeah, 80 milliohms, and we're getting 400 milliohms. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know if these parts are out of spec or, I don't know. Yeah, tell me if I'm doing something wrong, but these parts just don't seem to operate the way I think they should operate. If it's only 85 milliohms on resistance, then it should handle this just fine. And I don't know if it, if it's lying about the 500 milliamps continuous current or, uh, that's, I'm only doing half of that. So let's look at the data sheet again. Static on resistance, five volts, half an amp, 80 milliohms, half an amp. Uh, I'm just not measuring that. So I don't know, something weird's going on. Uh, otherwise, I think it's a nice little part, you know, really low on resistance and 500, you know, half an amp is fine for, you know, almost all circuits that I play with, right? It's rare that I come up against an amp for, uh, for, for a little circuit or something, especially these days with CMOS and everything. Uh, you're just not drawing a lot of current anymore. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Kind of weird. Okay, well, that was a quick video. Um, the part number was an ST2042. So comment below if I did something stupid and comment below if you know a good replacement, since this is not recommended for new designs, maybe what a, uh, what a good, uh, uh, you know, substitution for the, uh, for the part is. But uh, I, I would have liked it if you can still get them. Thank you.